You betrayed them by holding them accountable. You betrayed him by looking at his phone and catching the fact that he was cheating with one person and texting five other women. That was a betrayal. And so in the narcissist's mind, because you betrayed me, I'm gonna punish you. I'm gonna leave you. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, you're so controlling. You're so manipulative. You're so, like, invading my privacy. I can't do this, so I need to be able to leave. Did you get discarded with no notice? Like you were in a relationship, it felt great, then all of a sudden, poof, gone. Like you're just like, I don't even know what just happened. This person just up and left me. Maybe they ghosted you. Maybe you got discarded with no notice. A toxic person all of a sudden was in your life, then they were gone. Like all of a sudden, suddenly he lost interest in you and you thought you were the best thing in the world because of how he was treating you and then he turned around and went to someone else. Like you're left confused, you're questioning like your reality and ultimately questioning your worth. Did you actually matter? Did you actually value to this person? Well, I wanna to talk to you today about why narcissists discard, the patterns, the tactics, and how to be able to move on past that. If you guys are new, the reason why I talk about this is to bring awareness because of what I've been through in my life with being a narcissist, with the things that I've done that have hurt and destroyed relationships, marriages, all different types of things that have happened in my narcissistic tendencies and my personality disorder. These things are real. Narcissistic abuse is real and more people need to understand and more people need to learn about it. If you think you're with someone or if you think so, someone around you is dealing with a narcissistic relationship, please share it with them. Please help bring light to someone else's life that might be abusive, that might be harmful and they might not have a clue what it is or how to break out. When we talk about this idea of narcissists discarding you, we need to first understand like the patterns that typically happen with a narcissist. So idolize, devalue, discard, and rinse and repeat. We do it all over again. Put you up on a pedestal, tear you down to get rid of you, and then bring you back. A lot of times hoover you back and start the whole process all over again. The idealization phase has this idea of high attention, like lots of compliments, like affection, gifts. It's like this concept of the love bombing of like, this is going to happen to hook you as quick as possible. The narcissist wants to build a connection as quick as possible so that you don't realize that the connection being built is over shallow and shaky ground because the narcissist doesn't have depth to them. They wanna just move on and not be vulnerable about who they actually are. Sometimes they'll convince you with fake vulnerability because they're telling you about something that happened in the past of like, this is how I was abused. This is how I grew up. This is a hard traumatic thing I went through. And then they eventually use that to justify the actions and the behaviors and the reason why they're not vulnerable today. Those things still don't make it right to abuse and to be hurtful to another person. But normally, narcissists will find a way to try to justify that to make you feel bad about you standing up for yourself. So the idealization is all exciting, all great, found your soulmate, love of your life, this is the best thing ever, all my exes are crazy, but you're not, like, I've never felt this way about you. All this, like, great stuff. And then comes the devaluation. And oftentimes it's slow, but sometimes you have these pivotal moments that it happens really fast. When you get engaged, when you get married, when you have a kid, when you move in together. A lot of times those four are ones that all of a sudden it just switches and boom. Now they've got you, so there's no point in actually being nice anymore. They've already checked that box of being the person that you want them to be. And as a result, why do they have to be that anymore? So instead they start to criticize. Belittle the different things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that show up as not being good enough. You start to feel unworthy because he's constantly putting you down. He's constantly making you feel crazy. Constantly making you think that you're overreacting about his behavior. Then the discard happens, oftentimes out of nowhere. But with the discard happens, sometimes it can be without warning, sometimes he just disappears, sometimes he just moves on, sometimes it's just, hey, I'm done with you, I'm going to the next person. And we see this time and time again where people get discarded and they're so confused about what actually happened or why it actually happened. So why the discard? Like why did he actually leave? Sometimes people ask this question, especially because they're like, in the relationship, he was getting everything. Like I was still serving. I was like the perfect supply for a narcissist. Why would he actually leave? And so many people question their value and their worth because of this, because of how the narcissist just up and left and up and went to the next person and continued the cycle, sometimes person to person to person. And you're left wondering and oftentimes craving or pain shopping, thinking maybe he'll come back. Why can't he come back? Was that not good enough? 
would it be possible for him to come back? Maybe he could get aware of who he is and we could change and work together and be the best forever. Oftentimes we're selling ourselves a lot of different stories and a lot of different lies about the toxic person. But that question still stands of why did he discard you? Well, a lot of times you have the new supply and the new supply is the new, the shiny, the, the best thing ever. Nurses wants to sell themselves on this is the greatest relationship. And they'll tell you that time and time again. And you'll feel like the crazy one because the narcissist is like, see, I found my soulmate. You just weren't it. I found the best person in my life. It just wasn't you. And this starts to eat at you and make you feel even worse because you're like, wait a second. I guess that was me. I guess that he has the found the love of his life and it wasn't me. It makes you feel like you're not good enough, which is 100% not true. But the narcissist wants to put that on you. He's with the new person. He's like, this person gets me. Like they actually understand me. Like this is something that I've been looking for my entire life. And at the same time, they're locking in the new supply. They're also trying to make sure they hurt you so that you stay subservient to them and you don't actually move forward and take back your power and grow into the person that you were meant to be. Narcissists sometimes will view the new supply as being a fresh start. Like I can start all over again because this person doesn't know me. And they think that because they don't know that person that they'll be able to be with that person a little bit longer. Sometimes they'll think this next supply is better. This is the one. They're more attractive. They're, they're more excellent in the things that I want. And sometimes there's a concept of thinking that it will fix them. For me, sometimes it's the idea of maybe I can finally find someone who understands me, that uh, connects with me, that makes me feel better. When in reality, I just didn't want to show up in my own relationship and want to do the things I want. So I continue moving forward to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, regardless of who I hurt and regardless of what it did to the people around me. And oftentimes you'll see a narcissist that will do that time and time again of just moving on to the next person, to the next person, to the next person, because they think that going to the next relationship is going to fix the problems that they're dealing with. Not realizing and not understanding that the problems that they're dealing with come from themselves. So they go into the next perfect relationship and those problems still follow them. But instead of looking at it from self-evaluation is let me place it on someone else. So new supply, that's a popular one of why you get discarded. Second one, sometimes they just grow tired. Now, what I mean by this is not that they grow tired of you. It's more along the lines of they grow tired of dealing with another person and another human. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're boring or all of a sudden you're not interested. The thing with the narcissist is they only care about what they care about, which isn't you and it's also never been you. In the moment, it's been like, hey, you provide stuff for me. You make me look good. You give me money. Like I enjoy the sex, whatever it might be, you provide something. As soon as you stop providing or as soon as the narcissist is like, ah, this is boring because all I do is get provided by the same person. Let me go find someone else. Sometimes this idea of like where the narcissist gets addicted to the chase of like, I want to be with you. So I'm going to woo you. I'm going to get you to a place that you are madly in love with me. And then that deeper level intimacy meets like a wall for a narcissist. Like, I don't know what to do now. So yeah, it must just be an issue in the relationship. Let me go to the next person. And then they keep cycling through and moving on. This is where like they're not honest with you and they're just moving on to the next person, the next challenge, the next conquest to be able to have in their life. And third reason sometimes is punishment, okay? Where you betrayed them, that's the concept, okay? You betrayed them by holding them accountable. You betrayed him by looking at his phone and catching the fact that he was cheating with one person and texting five other women. That was a betrayal. And so in the narcissist's mind, because you betrayed me, I'm gonna punish you. I'm gonna leave you. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, you're so controlling. You're so manipulative. You're so, like, invading my privacy. I can't do this, so I need to be able to leave. And there's no accountability of, like, wait a second. You're actually cheating on me. Like, you're actually hurting me and hurting multiple other people because you're not being honest with yourself and with those other people. But the narcissist won't worry about that because it's not about them. It has to be all about someone else. So they continue to move forward. But they use that of like, hey, I need to punish you. So I'm going to hurt you for betraying me. I'm going to get revenge. And I'm offended because of what you did to me. So I'm going to like retaliate and get back on you. Okay. And then the fourth aspect, a lot of times narcissists like discard you is to avoid accountability. We see this half the time, I would say. Where you finally start getting to the place where you step into your power and you no longer take shit from the narcissist that they start leaving. That they're like, okay, like this person I've been able to control for so long, now I'm not controlling them. Now they're standing up and I can't do anything about it. So then they leave. 
They're going to find another person that's naive and susceptible and that they continue to manipulate and mold into the person that they want to be. But sometimes this happens. When you start to survive and you start to thrive, you start to stand up and they're like, all right, I'm out. I don't want to have to deal with this accountability and responsibility on a day-to-day basis, so I'm out of here. Oftentimes when you're dealing with a narcissist and you start stepping into your power, it's kind of like training a toddler. More or less, it's probably like training a puppy, to be honest. It's where you're repeating the same things over and over and over again with such consistency, it seems like the other person is going to go crazy. It's partly what you need to do because you need to get to the place where you're repeating the same thing over and over with no variation because they'll find a, they'll find an issue with that. With no variation, and the person finally realizes like, hey, I need to stop doing this to this person or I need to get out. We see this actually work when people use copy paste for like child custody agreements. So like, hey, I want to pick up the kid a day early. Here's the agreement, paste. Like instead of even saying anything, here's the agreement, here's the agreement. And getting used to giving the person the same feedback, the same information every single time, oftentimes will get to the place where it gets through their head of like, okay, like I shouldn't ask that because I'm not going to get that. Or I'm not going to ask that because I don't want that response. Or I'm going to change and modify something so that I don't get that response anymore. Like there's multiple ways to do it, but being able to put it back so they understand you're not going to get a different variation out of me because I'm consistent about who I am and the direction I'm going. This is what happens when we work with people to to go from survivor to thriver, to change their thought process and their mindset. And that's how we start to move on is by embracing the truth, by focusing on the fact that it wasn't you. You didn't cause this person to cheat on you. You didn't cause him to hold money from you. You didn't cause him to hide the sale of half the company and you're stuck with debt. You're stuck with a lot of different issues. You didn't cause him to do anything. Those are choices that he made. You endured the abuse. You endured the attacks. You endured being cheated on. He left you. He left the kids. And you accepted that. And like you have to be able to accept and move through that. Because the only way you can actually get to the place of saying, hey, this is what happened. This is what I dealt with. This is the pain that he put me through. Then we can actually move to the place of getting to the healing. Now, there's an aspect of like, well, like maybe maybe I could have accepted it. Maybe I could have like been better. Maybe I could have changed something. The amount of stuff that you would accept from a toxic person is only going to slow or ramp up the timeline that you're with that person. So you don't accept anything, that timeline might ramp up and you're out. Or you accept a lot of different things and that timeline might slow down and you're with for a long period of time. If you're at the place where you want to find truth and you want to move forward, then I want you to encourage you to go to escapetoxicity.com and start their process to get free mentally and emotionally. Because it's not enough to just have the knowledge. You can watch all of my videos and still not be free because a mindset hasn't changed. A story that you believe hasn't shifted. That's what we work with. So go to escapetoxicity.com today to check that out.